Hi, I'm Power Monkey, and in this tutorial video, I'm going to be teaching you about tables. So the first thing that you're going to want to know is that tables basically just store multiple values like numbers, booleans, functions, strings, and they can also store other tables. So to create a table, you can do local t equals, and then you can do the squiggly brackets. So you hold shift and where your square brackets are on the keyboard. So this is a table right here. So tables can either behave as an array or a dictionary. We're going to be looking at both of these today. So arrays basically store an ordered list of items and dictionaries they just store key value points. So we're going to be looking at the arrays first but before we do that we're going to want to know that the hashtag symbol so on Mac, I hold Alt and 3 to get this hashtag symbol. So this just returns the length of a table. So for example, if we do print and then we do hashtag T, the output will print 0 because the length of the table is 0 because there's nothing inside the table right now. So that will print 0. So to create an array, we are going to do local my array equals and then we can put our values here so we can do this is a string so this is going to be one of our values and then we can do true and we can also do 60 and you can have as many of these as you want in your array so now that we have the array we're going to want to read from this array so to do this we are going to print my array and then you do the square brackets sign and then you can do one to get the index of the array that you're looking for so this is number one this is number two and this is number three because we've separated each of our values with a comma so this will print this is a string if we do print my array and then the square brackets two then this is going to print the second index of the my array table so this will print true and if we do print my array three this will print 60 because we are indexing the third value in our array so it's 60 so that will print 60 over here so now to write into arrays we can do my array let's say that we want to change 60 so we are going to index number three because that is our third value inside our array and we're not going to make this equal 60 anymore we're going to make this equal 30. so now this is equal to 30 and if we want to create a new item then we can just do my array and then we can do four and we are going to assign this to the base plate so we're going to do workspace dot base plate so now our array has been changed to this is a string true 30 and then we have a fourth item which is the workspace dot base plate so if you want to add new items at the end of your array and you don't know how many items are inside your array you don't know how many values you have so for adding new items at the end of your array you can just do let's create a new array so that it doesn't get confusing so we're going to do local my array 2 equals and then we're going to create a table and then we're going to put our list of arrays in here so we're going to do item 1 and then we're going to do item 2 so there's two ways of inserting arrays. So we can do table.insert. So here for our first value, we need to put the table that we want to insert our new value into. So we're going to do my array two because we have created a new array for this example. And then we want to insert our new item. So we're going to do item three. So this will insert item three at the last position of the array. You can also do my array two and then you can just do the square brackets and do the hashtag sign so my array two and then plus one because we want to put it at the end of our array so we're going to do plus one so that it's the last array to be inserted into this array right here and then we're going to make that equal to item four so if we do print my array two and then the square brackets we do three in the output this will print item three. And if we 
copy and paste this over here and we change this index to 4 then this will print item 4 over here so if we test this you will see that we will get the desired output that we are expecting so if we go output as you can see if we go over here it has printed this is a string which is what we expected true and then 60 and then item 3 and item 4 so it all works. So now let's go into inserting new items into your array. So let's say that you want to insert a new item in the middle of your array, not at the end. You don't want to put it at the end, you want to put it in the middle or maybe at the beginning of your array. So to do that, first I'm going to create a new array for this new example. So we're going to do my array 3 equals and creating a table and then we're going to do first string and then we're going to do last string so now to insert a new item in the middle of our array let's say we're going to do table dot insert and then we want to say the table that we want to insert it to so my array three and then we're going to do the position that we want to insert our array into so i'm going to do two so that it will place this new item that we are about to name as middle string right in the middle of this array because it's going to index it at two so it's going to go one and it's going to squish it in here to make this new item the second index. And this is this one is going to get pushed to the next one. So this one's going to be the third index. So let's just do print my array three and then one. This will print first string. And if we do print my array three and then in the square brackets we index two, then this will print middle string. And if we do print my array three and in the square brackets we index three, then this will print last string. So if we run this you will see that this will happen. So as you can see first string, middle string and last string. So now let's move on to removing items from an array. So to remove an item you're going to want to do table dot remove and then we can do my array three and we're going to want to remove this middle string that we just inserted. So we indexed it at number two so we're going to put two. So it's going to remove the second value in this array which is middle string. So if we do print let's copy and paste this over here the first one isn't going to change but because we erase this one last string is going to get bumped back down to two so this will print last string so if you see when we run this let's open up the output again it has printed first string and last string which is what we expected so now let's move on to finding items so if you want to find the index position that your value is in we can do table dot find and then you want to say the table that you want to look for your value in so i'm going to look for my array three and i'm going to look for last string and this will index as number two because it is place second because we added this one but then we removed it so it's indexed at number two so it will print number two as that is its position inside the array and if we do table dot find and then my array three and then we do middle string then this will print nil because this value does not exist inside the table so if we do table dot find my array three and then we do first string and then we do two so we're basically saying start the search at index two so it's going to start searching for this value after two so it will start here but because it's actually at number one it's going to return nil so let me put these into print functions so print and then print over here as well like that there we go so if we run this now it has printed two nil and nil which is exactly what we expected so now let's clear the output and now if we want to move items from one array to another array so we can do table dot move and then you want to select the item that you want to move so you want to put the item or items that you want to move into another table so we are going to do my array three and then we're going to go one two 
2 so we're going to take everything in between 1 and 2 and then we're going to move this to the end position of my array 2 so over here so we're actually going to insert it with the items array that we have created so we're going to do hashtag my array 2 to get the length of the array and then we're going to do plus 1 to put it at the end and then we're going to say the table we want to put it in so we're going to do my array Two. So what this is doing is that it's going into my array 3, it's taking the first and second values which is first string and middle string and then this is saying that we want to place it inside my array 2 and we are giving the position that we want to place it inside this array. So we're saying we want to put it at the end of my array 2. So if we do print and then we do my array 2 you will see that it's going to print the table. So as you can see has printed the table if we open up this table you can see that the number one is item one item two three four and then five and six as you can see first string and last string have been moved into my array two so now let's say that we want to clear my array three so we are going to do table dot clear and we're going to do my array and then we're also going to do table dot clear my array 3. You know what let's just clear all the arrays now because we're done with the arrays example after this so let's just clear all these arrays. So if we do print my array let's just print all the tables so my array, my array 2 and my array 3. So if we run this as you can see it has printed the empty tables because we have just cleared them. So now these are all empty. So these are arrays and we are now going to be moving on to dictionaries. Okay so first we're going to want to know how to create dictionaries. So what you're going to want to do is first you're going to want to create your table. So I'm going to call this local my dictionary and we're going to create the table with the two squiggly lines and then we're going to drop a line and then we're going to create our key so our key is going to be dinosaur name and then we're going to make this equal to harry and then we're going to do a comma to say that we are creating a new key we're going to drop a line and we're going to put the square brackets and then quotation marks to make it a string and then we're going to do dinosaur color and we're going to make this equal to brick color dot new and we're going to do forest green and then we're going to do a comma to separate for a new key and we're going to do herbivore and we're going to make this equal to true and then we're actually going to create a part instance over here so we're going to do local dino part equals instance dot new and we're going to do part and then we're going to go over here and reference this instance so you don't need to always name them with a string you can also use variables over here so we're going to do dino part and then we're going to make this equal to true so we forgot to put a comma here so we're just going to put a comma there so this is a dictionary we have our keys over here on the left hand side and then after the equals on the right hand side we have our values. So here we have a string value, then we have a brick color value, then we have a ball value and another ball value. So now for reading from dictionaries, so let's do print and then we're going to do my dictionary and similar to the array where we were indexing we're going to do the square brackets but instead of putting the index number we're going to put our key so let's say that we want to print harry's name we're going to do dinosaur name and then this will print harry in the output and then if we do print my dictionary and then we do the square brackets and we are going to do dino part because we're referencing this variable over here we don't need to put quotation marks but for the strings here we need to put quotation marks so dino part and this will just print true because that is the value we have set this key to be so if we test this then you will see that it will print Harry and true, which is exactly what we expected. So that is how you can read from dictionaries. You just have to say the table 
that you are going to be reading from and then you just have to say the key that you're looking for and then it will print the key's value. So now let's do writing into dictionaries. So let's create a new key and value for this dictionary. So we're going to do my dictionary and we're going to do the square brackets and then we're going to say the name of our key. So I'm going to do dinosaur size and then we're going to make this key equal to big and then let's say that we want to change an existing key so we're just going to do my dictionary and then say the key we want to change so dinosaur color and then we're going to make this equal to brick color dot new and then we're going to make this uh let's make this cyan so now we have changed the brick color to cyan for our dinosaur color inside this dictionary right here so now if we're to do print my dictionary and then we do dinosaur let's copy and paste this dinosaur in the size and then we do print let's copy and paste this and then we do dinosaur color then this will print big and this will print cyan because here we have changed the dinosaur color to no longer equal to brick color dot new dot forest green is going to be brick color dot new dot cyan so this will print cyan so if we try this you will see that this will be happening. So as you can see, it's printed big and cyan. So if you want to remove keys from your dictionary, so removing keys from dictionaries. So to do that, we're just going to do my dictionary and then you want to put in square brackets the dictionary that you want to get rid of. So let's say that we want to get rid of the dinosaur color. We're going to do dinosaur color equals nil and that will just remove the key from the dictionary. So if we do print my dictionary at the end, you will see that in the output over here, we have the dinosaur name, which is Harry, the dinosaur size, which is big, and the dinosaur color we deleted at the end. And then we have the herbivore, which is equal to true. And then this is our part instance, which is also equal to true. So that was this tutorial on tables. So I hope that you understand how to use tables in Roblox now. And if you like this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to. If not, I'll just see you in the next video. Bye. Yeah.